All right, so let's talk about arc length. Now, the idea behind um, computing arc length is to take, you know, a curve over some interval, A to B, and then we're going to break it into little segments, okay? And then each one of those segments is going to be approximated with a straight line. So, for example, if we take a point here and a point here, then we can compute the distance between those two points and we'll take the length of that line segment to be the length of the curve. Now, if we break the, the interval into more and more pieces, you know, then essentially this delta x goes to zero, right? Because we're, we're letting n, the number, of, um, the number of, of segments, go to infinity. And then, um, e then this distance between any two points gets closer and closer to the length of the curve. And if we then add up all those distances of each one of those line segments and let n go to infinity, then we'll have the length of the curve. Okay, so we're going to use integrals to compute arc length. So if you look at the approximation of the length of the curve between um, two given points, right, we can take this, this, uh, curve that's drawn down here, then the length of the curve is just the, the length of the, the segment connecting the points on that curve would just be the change in x squared plus the change in y squared um, and the square root of that. That's just based on the Pythagorean theorem. And then we can also, if we know the slope of the, of the curve, um, then we can do a linear approximation to get that delta y. So delta y is just the slope of the curve times delta x. And so if we do that substitution, right, we substitute that in here, then you can see that we have delta x, we have a common factor here of delta x and delta x, right, and it's squared inside of a square root. So we just pull that, pull that delta x out of the square root, and what we're left with is the square root of 1 plus f prime of x, okay? And now, so that's the length of one segment, and then if we, you know, add up all of those little segments and let the number of segments go to infinity over an interval, then what we end up with is an integral. So what we end up with is down here, right, we end up that, with this formula that says arc length is um, the integral over the interval from a to b of 1 plus the derivative of f of x squared dx. Okay, so that's where the, the formula comes from. So let's, let's, uh, let's try an example. Now, in this example, we're asked to find the circumference of a semicircle of radius 1. All right, now you know how to find the circumference of a semicircle. You know, it's half of a circle, right? So the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Um, so half a circle would just be pi r. And in this case, r is 1, so we would expect to get a value of pi. All right, so we're just going to test this idea and see, do we actually get pi? So let's, I'm going to draw a little semicircle. Actually, I'll go back to green. Let's, I'm going to draw a little semicircle. Actually, it might be better just to draw the semicircle first and then put the axis around it. So, okay, so there's my semicircle. I'll put an axis down here and an axis here. So we'll center the semicircle um, at the origin, and so it's going to go from 1 to minus 1 because the um, the radius is 1. Okay, so here's our y-axis and here's our x-axis. All right, so we know that the equation for a circle is x squared plus y squared uh, equals 1. And if we just want the top half of the circle, we can rearrange this into um, y is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right. Now, if we had the bottom half of the circle, it would be the negative square root of that. But we just want the top half of the circle. So there's a, there's a function for um, this curve that um, this that for the top half of the circle. All right. So let's try using the formula. Now, it's where we um, we need the derivative of the function. Okay. So our function is the square root of uh, one minus x squared. So um, the derivative of that, dy dx, is equal to 1 half uh, 1 minus x squared 
to the minus one half, and then we have to use the chain rule, right? Take the derivative of the inside function so we get minus two x. Alright? And if we clean that up a little bit, we'll end up with you can see the one half and the two will cancel. Now we don't we want to make sure we preserve that negative. Although it turns out not to really matter, because then we're gonna square it. So <laughs> we end up with um uh, minus x over 1 minus x squared. Okay, so that's the function that we're going to put into the um, formula for arc length. All right, so let's put it in there. We're going to integrate from a to b, which is minus 1 to 1, and we want to integrate the square root of 1 plus f prime squared. So that's our dy dx squared. So when we square that, we get x squared over 1 minus x squared. So conveniently, the um, square root inside the square root <laughs> goes away. Otherwise, it it's uh, it gets ugly. All right, dx. All right, now let let me need to clean that up. We need to make that a little neater. So I'm going to combine this. If I write this one as 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x squared, then I have a common denominator, and I can rewrite that as minus integral from minus 1 to 1. In the numerator, I'll get 1 minus x squared plus x squared, and then the denominator will be 1 minus x squared. Square root of that whole thing, and dx. All right, so these x's, those will go, these x squareds go away. And then this, we can take the square root of the numerator, so let me rewrite it again here, integral from minus 1 to 1. Um, the square root of 1 in the numerator, because that's all that's left in the numerator, is just 1. So I'm just going to write it as 1 over the square root of the denominator, which is 1 minus x squared, dx. All right. Now that's something you might recognize. Hopefully you recognize it. Otherwise you have to do a trig substitution, and, um, and then you'll, you'll get the same answer. But you might recognize this as the arc sine. So this is the arc sine of x. And we want to evaluate that from uh, minus 1 to 1. OK, so we're going to get the arc sine, arc sine of 1 minus the arc sine of minus 1. OK, so at what angle is the sine equal to 1? Well, the sine is equal to 1 when we're up at the well, at the top of the circle. So <laughs> this is just pi over 2. So the angle pi over 2 gives us a sine of 1, right? So the arc sine of 1 is pi over 2. And then at what angle is the sine negative 1? Well, that's down there at mi minus pi over 2. Okay, so we have pi over 2 minus a minus pi over 2. And so it just becomes pi over 2 plus pi over 2, which is pi. So that's good news. Our formula worked because we got what we expected. That is the um, circumference of a semicircle.